Hey everyone, it's Sam again. I want to say thanks to the people that commented, liked, or emailed me telling me to keep these videos up. Um, I was unsure of them, but I will, as long as it even, I could have even one person like them or uh, watch them, excuse me, one view. Like I know it's probably getting to somewhere, someone that needs it. So I'll keep doing them as long as I can continue to remember. Um, so thank you for reaching out about that. Um, I'm recording from my phone this time because my iPads are giving me troubles. I need an S6 here or something. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, the show must go on. So today we had our 15th test out of 23 during the freshman semester. Um, and it went well for me, um, not as well for some others, but, uh, biochem is one of my better subjects. Um, so you'll have, you have a total of like four core classes right now, at least we do this semester and then three other classes. Uh, master seminar will follow you all the way from freshman semester through phase two. Um, and then you'll have a grade for that class, but the there are um, two other ones right now that we are taking that are pass or fail. And then we have research eval right now that is graded papers. We have three papers. However, starting next semester, it will be pass or fail as well. So actually that's five graded classes. Um, so we, a lot of people are like, wonder how many writing assignments. We had one for master seminar and three for um, research eval. So like, it's not a heavy lift. Um, I went ahead and completed all of mine already because we had a couple weekends where we didn't have a Monday test. So it was just better for me to get those knocked out. So I'm not trying to do them while studying for a weekend, over the weekend for a test. Um, so we have eight, I have eight tests left in the semester and then five weeks that we have left. Yay, week 11 right now. Um, and then we have two pass or fail items, which um, will be, is like clinical skills and med history. So um, there are things that you can kind of talk through and the instructors have guaranteed us that everybody is going to be passing their class so the instructors here I've said this before are super helpful so they'll be you'll be able to email them or text them or what have you the whole time you're studying and taking courses obviously don't abuse it because that's their personal time too so um, I recommend to utilize them but don't go crazy obviously uh, so I also, a lot of people came in here, um, thinking that Medical Center of Excellence has the best internet, maybe, um, unless you opt to get a government computer on, uh, while you're in processing, they will, that you aren't required to buy like an iPad or a computer or anything. So you can opt to get a government computer and you can then use the government Wi-Fi in the building. Um, however, we all know government computers um, have their pros and cons. So uh, there are Wi-Fi pucks in each classroom. There are five. However, they seem to just work when they want to work. Um, they're getting on, they're get, going to commercial Wi-Fi throughout the whole building, but it's not. I've been told they've been saying that since like the seniors were freshmen. So uh, I'm not looking. For that to happen while I'm here, um, and then if it does, yay! But I recommend having a good hotspot at least for the test uh, days, like test mornings. You want to make sure that you don't get kicked off, or it just spins when you submit your test, and that would be a headache. But I always hook up to my. I don't usually use Wi-Fi very much during the week. Uh, I download all the presentations ahead of time usually. Um, but I definitely hook up my laptop to my phone hotspot on test mornings. So I recommend everybody do the same. Uh, I got 
somebody asking um, why I'm a geo bachelor here. So I just thought I would just tell everybody. Um, originally when um, my husband and I were talking about me being coming here without the family, I, um, I was in pieces. Obviously I have three kids, including a little girl that's gonna be one next month. Um, so I cried for probably a month and then I um, got here and everything seems to be working out. My husband and I are doing wonderful. The kids are doing well. Uh, obviously with technology nowadays, I can FaceTime them pretty much anytime I'm not in class. So that really helps. And my teenagers have their own phones so they can text and FaceTime me. Um, but they are teenagers, so they kind of want to do what they want to do. But my husband has is a civilian. He has a really good job. Um, so he didn't want to lose that. And they had just made a new place for him where we were at. Uh, not too long before, around the time my daughter was born, and so he didn't want to try to move again and then have to leave because they weren't going to make a whole nother position for him. Um, he's already talked to them and basically through the, after the schoolhouse is over, they're going to work with him uh, to make sure every couple of years that they'll be able to um, keep him uh so that's great and then like i said i have two teenagers my oldest got into early college so um that's definitely going to be beneficial and then there are some other little things continuity of care for um some medical things that my family has going on and that sort of thing so um it was a hard decision but honestly i don't think i would be doing as well as i am here if they were here if anybody, any mom or dad or what have you, uh, if you're like me, you would probably hear your baby crying and then like leave your studies and be like, what's wrong? What's going on? What can I do? Or just like sometimes you come home and you're not, you're not in like the best mindset. So you just want to like cuddle your family and study. Like you don't always, that doesn't always help you in here. So I, it hurt me when I left but it's okay now we're five weeks left of the semester and then I'll fly home for a week um and so everything's working out good for us so far um congrats to all of the people that got in army I saw the active duty and the national guard um letters come out uh so congrats congrats to everyone um I will say the people that are doing better this semester are the ones that did the matriculation courses that came with your PA cat. So I know you got all probably got an email saying you need to do these before you get here. You don't have to do any of them. I did the one that said like uh, make your own make your like time management schedule. I did that one more for me than for the course and this it said Oh, you'll have to turn that in when you get here. You don't have to turn anything in. <laughs> um, you don't have to do any of it. But I will say the people that are making like 98 and 100 on every test so far are the ones who've done those matriculation courses. So um, you can enjoy the time with your family that you have right now and then study more than when you get here, which is basically what I did. Or you can do the course right now and then maybe studying will be easier when you get here um obviously it's a whole preference thing and then um and if you're just gonna like quizlet answers the matriculation course pre-matriculation course obviously don't do it because then you're not gonna learn much of anything anyway so just wait until you get here um when you in process the first two weeks um, are typically service specific. So you'll in process with all army or air force or Navy or Coast Guard. Um, if you, if you have more than army in your class, which every class has except for ours so far, um, then the third week is in processing IPAP. So you'll do it with all of the services together. Um, and then we have, uh, you have, a weekend after that third week and then you start courses on Monday and you hit the ground running so don't 
don't be surprised when uh, certain teachers talk very quickly and go through 80 slides or more in an hour on your first day. Um, she's wonderful though, don't get me wrong, I love her. Um, so, uh, you, when we in process during those three weeks, we had a lot of gaps. So if you're one of those people who like cannot get to San Antonio until Saturday or Sunday before in processing starts, do not be scared that you're not gonna have time to like get internet hooked up and uh, get your whole house situated because you have gaps in your schedule. We, I think, we didn't even have a week three because we were all army, so we just did everything in the first two weeks and then 90, well, 80% of us took leave for the third week, which will not happen with y'all's class because I believe you have other services there as well. Um, but the uh, first two weeks, even so, we maybe we wouldn't come until 10 one day because we had, uh, nothing but no briefs before 10 o'clock or something and then um there is a subway and a starbucks downstairs if that's your jam and like a little px and a barber shop so that will help some people with like oh during lunch i need to get my hair cut or i really need coffee because this stuff is boring today it happens um so know that you're gonna have time and your schedule's gonna be flexible and even when you start classes if you have to miss a class for a doctor's appointment or something like that, totally fine. You just have to get a paper signed by the instructor so that they know you're missing the class. So it's no big deal. And then your, of course, your advisor will have to sign too. But um, then, oh, I wanted to also say something about dress uniforms. Last month, so we got here, we started uh, in processing in April, April, May, we did not wear our dress uniform June. We did the last, the last Friday of June. Um, and it was just the t-shirt with your rank. If you're OCS, obviously you're just kind of the gold OCS right here. You don't have the, the shoulder boards or, um, I think that's the wrong term, but you don't have those, uh, anything on your shoulders. If you're enlisted right now, you'll switch to just the gold OCS on the collar. And then you don't wear like a tie or anything because you're wearing the class B's. So then you'll also um, have your name and then you'll have your RDI and for your current branch, because obviously you haven't branched to medical unless you're like a 68 series. I'm not, so. Um, and then you can wear, ladies, you can wear skirt or pants and then obviously pants for the men. Um, so, um, it's pretty good. We ended up, we had like a day that was supposed to be till 1500 that day and they, it was a holiday weekend. So they kind of moved everything up and we cut out at 12 o'clock. So that was awesome. Um, they, I can say your senior service advisors and the program director are generally always looking out for you. So hopefully that continues throughout my time here. Obviously when leadership changes, other things tend to change as well. Um, we did have a PD where um, the Dean of the school was talking about enlisted potentially getting um, uh, commissioned in December. I believe that's something they're trying to move towards because all the other programs commission when they arrive here. However, IPAP, you are not required to have a degree, as all of you know. Um, so I think that's something that may be holding everybody back from commissioning upon arrival. Because I know in our class, most people have at least a bachelor's. There's a couple with a master's and a couple with doctorate degrees. And then there's like the handful that only got the prereqs done. So they don't have like a bachelor's degree. It is what it is, um, but that's something they are working on according to the Dean. So maybe one day, I'm not getting my hips up, but maybe one day, or maybe even at the end of phase one, I don't know. Um, so if anybody else has any questions for me, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a, like a touch point this month um, with only five weeks left. I'll do another one the last week after we have our last um, exam. It'll be great. Oh, and 
If you don't want to fork out the $250, $300 to have your ASU jacket done when you get here because you just moved, you spent all this money on other things, you don't have to. You're probably not going to wear your ASU jacket until your phase two graduation. They don't even wear them. At least the phase one graduation that I went to, they were not wearing them. They were wearing just the long sleeve name, RDI, and rank. So, um, if you need to budget a little bit when you arrive because of the expenses, that's something that you can push off to a later date. Um, so there, there's my two cents. Um, congrats again to all the graduates, or not the graduates, the uh, selectees uh, for the program. Um, and I can't wait to meet you when you get here. All right, have a good one.